what a terrific film windup is. It nine minutes of bliss. I mean, there's so many emotions that run through us in that short period of time. It's just incredible the power that a short film can have, and particularly this one. Um, what do you think the magic is? You've been so close to it, but do you have an idea of what it is? We'll start with um, magic. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like, I think the intention to make a good story, because we always, from the beginning, we know the story is the king. And along the way of making the good story, like, we keep on changing it until the very last end. Uh, Jason hated it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I um, we got a lot of good advice along the way. And like, for example, we should write down the theme of the story in big letters and make sure we don't drift it away. <laughs> we like develop it. I believe for the next one, we'll make sure we have like clear storyline before the production started that will save us a lot of time. Uh, but yeah. I mean, what a great learning experience that must have been. Yes. Yeah. yes sure. Learn a lot. Yeah. When you say the next one, could you foresee a, f a feature based on wind up? Oh, I would hope so. But um, I think like relatively, I think probably a short after that, another short. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, all part of the future. <laughs> Um, Jason, you have children. I'm wondering how that may have transformed your work on it or your ideas on Wind Up. Yeah, I mean, so my wife became pregnant during the production of Wind Up. Oh. So it was kind of like, oh, I can relate to this father now and project what he felt. And um, even though this was after the film, my son was born four months ago. He's four months now. And uh, he had a uh, a complication. He had to get transferred to the, the neonatal intensive care unit for a few weeks. Uh, and it was scary. And it kind of dawned on me how important actually the, the message of this film was because uh, me and my wife did feel helpless at the time. And um, luckily, the nurses and doctors out there, and especially during the pandemic, I, 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 they're amazing. They're heroes, really. And they kind of instilled oh this word. hope every day um, and kind of allowing us to never give up on it right and I feel like in in you know you talked about the uh, magic of the film I think that is kind of encompasses the magic where um, whether it's a friend a doctor or a film to have something to give you ins inspiration of hope and for people to keep going I think is important especially now yeah what, a, what an incredible coincidence I'm yeah. glad things turned out Oh on, yeah, on, yeah. He's, he's completely healthy now and normal. And uh, you know, uh, I just want to thank the doctors at this point. <laughs> and even actually, because of the film, actually, oh. a lot. <laughs> she was. Uh, <laughs> you know, the the beauty of the physical appearance of it, the um, texture and the movement of hair, really struck me. I, you, I've never seen that before, and the the purity of the color and textures. Um, were amazing to me. And just describe, if you will, just briefly to like a, a know nothing, what that technology was. Uh, so we are using like real time rendering. And uh, it's definitely hard at this point because um, like half of the team is from AAA games, and which means they know how to use game engine. And half of the team is from the film industry, which means they know how to achieve the, the animation look. But now, like, it's our first time actually to actually collaborating with each other and try to achieve the film look. And, you know, which means we have to try a lot of new things. Uh, use that example. Um, so for traditional film animation, it usually requires a render farm and it usually takes hours to render. And for real-time rendering, like it's, it's, 30 frames per second, which yeah. is like, if we do the math, it's a million times faster. So yeah, there's a lot of like challenges to achieve the visually, like what we want to achieve. 
but at the same time, like we are really, we feel like really rewarding by doing this because every single step, like we have to try a lot of new things and we have to, you know, invent a bunch of like new features to achieve this quality. And every single step we feel like we are changing the history of real-time rendering. So we are super proud. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. For, for just to get perspective, cause I, um, you know, even came from game, she's used to real-time rendering. Uh, all the animators um, weren't, you know, haven't d dealt with a real-time rendering at the time. So seeing it for the first time was really mind blowing. I mean, for animators, it would take months to see that final picture that you would see or the audience would see. And we were able to animate a shot and then see that instantly. So like you said, that that beautiful hair and the, the kind of the glint in the eye when you see Kiki pop up and hear the music, those are kind of important, um, important elements to the film, especially without dialogue. And with the, the real-time rendering, I don't think we were able to streamline that, see that faster and get a performance out better. So um, it was, I thought it was exciting. And, and so. Like you can think like animators are like uh, actors in real action film. Oh and yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it helps a lot for their performance if they can see the actual environment and actual lighting and That's feel the tone of the movie when you acting. So like that will help a lot because in traditional animation, you see the batch render in Maya, which looks quite different <laughs> than yeah, the final image. Yeah. So there's a lot of like things you need to imagine. Like the director say, the mood of this shot mm -hmm. should look like this. Just imagine this, imagine this and be sad or something. But like, you don't have to say this if you just show them this is the environment and feel yeah. it. Yeah, that helps. And, and a lot. speaking of the environment, I, I was thinking a few times since I saw it about uh, the symbolism of everything and the cave, which is, is like a comatose state, perhaps, something like that. Uh, and the street that is the ideal, you know, I found that very moving. And I think they're wonderful images to have to describe the story, to fill in the story. Um, were these places that you uh, physically, visually experienced at all? Uh, so we went through a lot of reference images. Um, most of them are like West part of Asia, uh, like uh, part of Sichuan and Tibet and Bhutan. Uh, oh. A lot of from Bhutan. And uh, also we got some like tree reference and try to make it supernatural. I think a lot of references from like southern part of Asia. I forgot which country. Um, but then we realized that like realistic kind of look will carry too much details and probably will pump up the poly counts and we need to die back. As you mentioned, like symbolism. Uh, we want to combine the realism with like illustration. I'm personally a big fan of Evan Earth. Um, you, you probably saw his work because he's he designed the background for Beauty and Beast. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But like I probably didn't hear his name. Like his style is like combine realism and illustration. So you keep the clear and smooth silhouette of the model and everything, and then add it back illustrated patterns. So we did that. So it doesn't look like too simple, I would say. It looks there's certain level of com like complex because we add a lot of il campaign illustration patterns, but at the same time, the silhouette the model are really simple. We did the same mm -hmm. thing for characters that like she's wearing loose and rounded fitting sweater but then it will look like a ball, like too simple. So we'll add back the detail by using like knitting patterns, things like that. Yeah, you, you know what, I it's, it's astounding when I think of it. I think back to um, the first uh, sort of film of state-of-the-art technology years ago, Polar Express, and how far things have come. And this to me is a, a new touchstone. I, Jason, can you just comment on that? Yeah, sure. So with the anim animation, I'm glad you bring up Polar Express um, because 
it was it, it, it's interesting because they used mocap right and then um and that was what was great about ebing because in games they use motion capture a lot and i think <laughs> there is a place for it um if w- we can use it for like reference and all that kind of stuff but um but ebing wanted that kind of more um traditional animation look mm-hmm. where you get more iconic poses and clear statements and so um and then that's why you know she brought. I, I have a traditional animation background, and my uh, uncle is a you know was Disney uh, famous Disney animator Glenn Keane, who uh, who recently directed uh, Dear Basketball, Academy Award winning animated short, and currently wow. directed Over the Moon um, on Netflix. And wow. but so I learned a lot from him throughout, and for the animation style in particular. Um, we had to walk this fine line between whether we go cartoony, like we see in a lot of um, children's animated films, or we go realistic. And we didn't want to go realistic, sort of like Polar Express, where it gets muddled and weird between mocap and, um, not to say Polar Express is weird or anything, but, uh, um, or too cartoony, where it becomes a joke. Uh, We needed to have it handle the emotional weight of the story. And um, yeah. my it's uncle. Anything but cartoony. It's 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 so the the emotion and feeling behind it is so authentic, and the look is so authentic that it's the symbiosis is beautiful. Oh, I'm glad so, you see. Yeah, yeah, really, really like it. Um, Yibing, just tell me briefly. You came from China, and uh, you know, and you landed in these amazing production houses. Just tell me a little bit briefly about your journey. What made you, is that why you came here? Uh, I mean, um, I was born and raised in China. I wanted to become an animator since I was very young. Uh, However, back then there was no, almost no animation industry in China. And if you have a Chinese parent, you know, they only want you to be a lawyer, doctor or engineer. So I, finished my master degree of engineering and I was like, hey, that's yours. And I decided to throw that all away and, and start all over to take all charge of my own life because I still want to be an animator. So I came to US by myself to chase my animation dream in 2008. I got in School of Visual Art in New York. And then soon after that, I think nine months later, I got in the talent development program of Disney animation. And since then, I've been working in a range of animation and AAA game studios, such as uh, Naughty Dog, Pixar, Disney animation. Incredible. Um, yeah, incredible. Uh, before Wind Up, I made a bunch of short by myself because I always yeah. like, I try to do <laughs> directing. <laughs> um, but this is actually my first time to be a real director. Well, you did a wonderful job. And Jason, you obviously come from a showbiz family. So, you know, you you probably grew up with a lot of this around you. Did that, did you just love it so much you had to stick to it? Or did they go, you've got to do animation? (laughs) No, it's funny because um, I would say, like, you you know, you're with your family and whatever your your father or uncle's occupation is, you kind of think everyone is, is, so it's kind of a normal thing. Like, oh, isn't your uncle an animator or isn't your grandfather a a cartoonist? You know, that kind of thing. (laughs) Um, I love drawing, I love all that, but I I love film, you know, the most when I was younger. And it's kind of what I I strived for. I tried to get into USC film school. Um, I didn't get in and and I was, you know, I looked at my uncle, I'm like, oh, he's making movies. Uh, he started as an animator. So maybe I, I should get into animation. So, and then from there, I, you know, I pursued yeah. it. Yeah. So That's I wasn't crazy. really, yeah. And then, but it <laughs> wasn't as easy as I thought. It, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of uh, heartache and, um, and, but it, it got us here and, you know, even gave me an opportunity here. So. I'm, That's I'm happy. so good. Thank you. We'll fi- I'm gonna finally see. find Jason. Like huh? we we're looking for oh. a lot of resume and like test, and you know you are the first one passing the test. Actually, the only one. <laughs> Thanks. I remember <laughs> when you're like Jason. Yeah, shots a test. You better. Know. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a name. I met Bob Clampett 
years and years ago. Yeah. And I had a, an art, he did a drawing for me. And I don't know what became of it. I mean, it didn't, it didn't leave the studio. So I don't know what happened, but I was so glad to have met him. And oh, yeah, I have great respect for animation. Yeah, yeah. So That's... thank you both. Just a charming film. Thank you. And please make a feature edition. <laughs> 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 thank you so I'll be much. Watching. <laughs>